Hi all, Retro Tech Chris here again. Recently, I went to Vintage Computing Fest East and picked up a few network cards for sale. For five bucks, I couldn't pass them up. And here they are. Notice how both cards have RJ45 and coax connections, which is pretty cool. So looking at the top card, it is based upon the Winbond 89C 905F chipset. It also has a spot for a boot prom, which is pretty cool. And also, it is network tested and approved. This is an NE2000 compatible card. The other card is based upon the RTL 8019AS chipset, and it's a nice card as well. So let's go ahead and get at least one of these cards installed into my Pentium 233 MMX. We've got a nice free ISA slot here that we can put the card in, get it all connected, and then we'll go ahead and get some software ready to go. So we'll start out with the Winbond card, and I'm going to repurpose my VirtualBox AMD PCNet 3 LAN Manager disk. And I'll go ahead and rename this to NE2000 for convenience, and we'll go to town on it. That's right, for this Winbond card, there are no specific drivers. You use the NE2000 compatible drivers. Kind of interesting. So we'll go ahead and put this floppy disk into the floppy drive of the virtual machine I have here. I have expanded LAN Manager to disk, and I can go ahead and expand the LAN Manager NE2000 driver and copy it to my floppy disk. Yes, this is the hard way. The easy way would be to install LAN Manager and then choose an NE2000 card. I'll modify config sys here so that we can change the driver over as well, and we'll set that to NE2000 there, and we'll be all set. We also need to modify protocol.ini. So we'll go ahead and look for the bindings and change that just for consistency, and move down to the bottom and change the driver name and also the binding down here. Though I will admit, I actually got this wrong. Instead of NE2000, it needs to be MS2000. So I went ahead and fixed this once we got over to the machine. So I thought we might as well do the Realtek card as well. So I downloaded the PCNet image again, and then I went over to the Realtek website and found the drivers for this card. That's right, DOS drivers for this ISA card are still available on Realtek's website. How cool is that? From there, I got through the capture process and unzipped the folder that got downloaded and found the pnpnd.dos and disk driver that we will need for our purposes. So then I went ahead and launched WinImage and copied this particular driver to a hard disk image that was already associated with the virtual machine that we will be using to set up the image. So I'm navigating there, this new virtual disk one, and it's actually an empty disk. So I just went ahead and injected that one file to this disk for ease of access. So you can see me doing this here. You could use a floppy disk as well, a virtual floppy disk, but this works just as well. So at this point, it's time to make some modifications to a boot disk. We'll start with that PC net disk that we had from before and rename it to be something Realtek so that we can use it for purposes of configuring our Realtek card. So after we do that, I'll get it inserted into the drive and we'll go full screen so we can see what we're doing. I'll go ahead and copy this driver to drive A and we'll make some modifications. So here you can see me copying the driver and then we'll go ahead and edit config sys and change that PC net up top to be Realtek something or other. And also the driver down here to be that PNPND file. And then from there, we're all set for config sys. Next, we get to edit protocol.ini and do something similar so that we can pick the right driver. So you can see me changing the bindings here and the driver name, and before long, we will have everything all configured. So at this point, I fired up my trusty Compaq LTE 5000 that was already on the network and proceeded to use the image to disk program to make two boot disks. The first one here I'm making is the Realtek one. Again, these are in no particular order, and we can go ahead and write that out. After a little bit of time, we have a nice bootable image. And next up, we'll use image to disk to do the same thing for the NE2000 driver. So here you can see me writing it to disk. Perfect. So I went ahead and started up the NE2000 disk with the Winbond card, and here we hung on initializing TCP IP via DHPC. This was so incredibly frustrating. I thought, okay, I went and found the Landstar utility that can be used to look at the settings of this card. I made an IRQ change, and I thought I'd go ahead and try again and I wrote things out, and now it says the hardware doesn't even respond. I think I also changed the port address, so that wasn't a good thing to do. So next we went ahead and decided to try the Realtek card since I was getting very frustrated, and I had a very similar problem. But before too long, it hit me. 
This is an ISA and PCI system, so I went into the BIOS and did a brute force sledgehammer method and assigned every IRQ and DMA to the ISA bus and then did a restart. And with that, well, I guess you can guess what happened. It was successful. So the Realtek card is now communicating. From there, I was able to log in and type a password, though that fails as expected, and map to drive Z, which is my Raspberry Pi, which worked absolutely great. I copied some files, I read some files, and everything looks good, so that was successful. So at this point, I decided to go back and try the Winbond card again, and it still didn't work, but after some IRQ changes, I was able to get things going, as you will see here in a minute, and look at this, we were able to go to drive Z and map and copy files as well. I went ahead and just copied a file for fun. It was about three megabytes just to prove that things would work, the CPU Z file, and lo and behold, everything worked great. So yeah, we definitely had some problems with IRQ conflicts, but we're eventually able to get things to work. And I'm happy to report that both the Winbond and the Realtek card get the green check of approval. Case closed.